two, lesson six of advanced algebra, and we're looking at uh, families of functions. And in this video, I want to take a look at this one scenario where you have a number inside the absolute value that's next to the x and how we deal with that. And then I'll do a few examples where we graph these using the transformations. We talked about the vertical stretch showing up outside the absolute value sign. In other words, if this four outside the absolute value sign, this four is a vertical stretch of the graph and this 4 is actually the slope of the rays, a rise of 4 and a run of 1. Now, when you're looking at a number inside next to the x, this is the slope of the rays. It is still going to be 4, but you'll notice it's also going, because it's inside the absolute value sign, it's also affecting this horizontal uh, transformation of 4. And as long as there's a number in front of the x, I cannot really tell what the horizontal transformation is. So what I have to do is I have to divide this first term by 4 so that the number next to the x is a 1. In other words, if I have x minus 4, the shift is right 4. I can see that. But if there's another number in front of the x, I don't know what this shift actually is. The number in front of the x has to be a 1. So in order to make this a 1, I need to divide this by 4, because 4 divided by 4 will be 1, making the number that's in front of the x a 1. However, because I divided this term by 4, I must also divide this term by 4, leaving this 1, and so now I have to put this 4 on the outside. So now this 4 times x here, if I distribute back, will give me the 4x that I began with, and the 4 times the negative 1 will give me the negative 4 that I began with, but now I can see what the horizontal translation is. It's actually a movement of 1 to the right, not a movement of 4. So whenever you have this situation where you have a number next to the letter x inside the absolute value, you have to divide both terms by that number so that the number next to the x is a 1 before you determine what the, vertical, what the horizontal shift is. So in this case, I would need to divide this by 4. I'm going to divide by 4. So I'm going to divide that by 4, leaving me x. And I'm going to divide that by 4 by 1. So now that I've taken, or now that I have just a 1 next to the x, now I can actually see what the horizontal translation is. And I still have the slope of the rays inside. So the negative sign is going to be a reflection over the x-axis. The 4 is going to be a vertical stretch of 4. The plus 1 is going to be a shift to the left 1. Remember, it's the opposite of what I see. And the 4 outside is going to be a shift up 4. So that's what's taking place. So whenever you have a number inside, we're going to need to divide that out so we can see what the horizontal translation actually is. All right, so now we're going to use all that information now to graph as well. Okay, so I'm going to take the same problem. All right, and I'm going to just do what we did and take this out for x plus 1 plus 4. Now, to graph these, we want to find the locate or locate the vertex and then use the uh, stretch or shrink or the slope and then use the negative sign to flip it upside down or reflect it over x. So remember when we did these, the absolute value, this horizontal translation, so this is going to be to the left 1, it's the opposite of what I see, and up 4. So the vertex is going to be at negative 1, 4. So I want to go ahead and graph these. So I'm going to put my markings on here that are required. So the vertex is at negative 1, positive 4. So here's my vertex. So that's the horizontal translation and the vertical translation. It's a reflection over x, which means it's going to open upside down. And the slope is 4. So I'm going to go down 4 and over 1 to give me the 1 ray, down 4 and over 1 to go the other way. Now that I have those, I can use my uh, straight edge to form my vertex. And so now I have my, I have the rays of my uh, absolute value. So the vertex is negative 1, 4. And this is the graph of the equation y equals the opposite of the absolute value 4x plus 4 plus 4. Okay, so I'm going to do four more examples, and you can watch as many examples as you need until you feel like you understand it, and then we'll uh, go on from there.
So here's my next example, and now this time the 4 is outside, so this is a reflection over x, meaning it opens, uh, opens down a vertical stretch of 4, so my slope is going to be 4, and then my horizontal translation is going to be left 5, and then my vertical translation is down 4. So I'm going to locate the vertex first, so the opposite of what I see there, so it's negative 5, and then down 4. So my vertex is going to be at negative 5, negative 4. So I'll go ahead and mark my axes. So I'm going to go left uh, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, might be about right there. And I'm going to label that. And then it's a negative sign, so it's going to open down. And then this is my slope, 4 over 1. So I'm going to go down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 1. It's a slope of one ray. And then down 4 and over 1 the other way. It's a slope of my other ray. So, whoops, do not want to do that. And then I have my rays. So this would be right here. This would be down here. So this would be the graph of that function, y equals negative 4 absolute value x plus 5 minus 4. So here I have 1 half times the absolute value of x minus 1 minus 4. So I'm going to go ahead and mark my axes and put my scale on each axis. I want to locate the vertex first. So this is a shift to the right 1 and down 4. So over 1 and down 4 is my vertex. So we'll label that. There's no negative sign, so it's going to be facing up. This is my slope, so it's going to be a rise of 1 and a run of 2 this way, and a rise of 1 and a run of 2 this way. So that's going to give me the two points that I need to draw my rays. So you'll notice that that shrinks it out or makes that absolute value much wider. And then we'll go ahead and label the graph. And that would be the graph of this. All right. I'm going to do two more examples. Again, if you want to keep watching, keep watching. If you think you got it, then uh, go ahead and tackle your homework. So here we have the expression, the absolute value of x plus 3 plus 2. So there's a horizontal shift going on and a vertical shift going on. That's it. Uh, the slope, no stretch or shrink, and no reflection. So we'll locate the vert vertex. It's the opposite of what I see there. And it is what I see there. So the vertex is going to be at negative 3, 2. So we'll label that negative 3, 2. There is no negative sign, so it's going to open up. And the number next to the x is a 1, so it's going to be a slope of 1. Going this way, and a slope of 1, or actually slope of negative 1, but for our purposes, 1. And then we'll have what we need to draw the rays. And then again, we will label our graph y equals absolute value x plus 3 plus 2. All right, I have one more example. So here we have the example y equals the absolute value of x plus 7. There is no reflection over x. There is no vertical stretch or shrink. So all we need to do is locate the vertex, and we have a slope of 1. So there is no movement or translation right or left, so it stays at the origin, and then a translation up 7. So my vertex is at 0, 7. Four, five, six, seven. And then the slope is 1. There is no stretch or shrink. So up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. I have the two points that I need to draw the rays. So make sure we label our vertex and make sure we label our graph. And there we have all the information we need. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. Again, remember the main thing about the, what we're talking about here is that one scenario where you have this 4 inside, you need to divide both terms by 4, so the x coefficients of 1 to actually see what the translation is.